we're told that uh, the uh, head of Iraqi television will have to look at our pictures before we're allowed to send them out to uh, you and the rest of the world. We don't know how long that process will take because we do have uh, several different uh, sets of pictures to show you. But at any rate, we hope that'll be coming up pretty soon, as soon as uh, technical problems at Iraqi TV can be solved. One more thing. We had been told, we had expected before uh, what happened last night happened, that uh, Iraqi television would be a target of the uh, coalition forces. It turned out it was not. There's no damage to the TV station, according to CNN's Chris Chris Manich, who was just there. Um, they don't have telephone service, nor does anyone in Baghdad, as far as we know. And um, the, um, uh, there's still no electricity available anywhere else in the city, but Iraqi television has generators, so they are up and running. That's, uh, that's the latest and the newest information I have, Susan. All right. Th thank you, CNN's John Holloman, keeping us up to date from Baghdad. Patrick? Right now, we're going to go to CNN's Mitch Leppard, who's standing by in London, and there people are anticipating the address by the new British Prime Minister. Mitch, what's the latest? Well, Patrick, uh, it was just before uh, midnight London time when Operation Desert Storm began. The uh, Ministry of Defense here did confirm that uh, British forces were involved in the initial attacks. Britain has 35,000 troops in the Gulf as well as a juicy state in the naval armada. It is the second largest military force behind the United States. Despite the late hour at Trafalgar Square in London, late shift workers were converging to take the all-night buses home, and there was much reaction. I think that war was inevitable, but I'm really sad that it started. Now that it has, I just hope it's over as quickly as possible and as few lives are lost as possible. I just look majorly shocked. I just like, uh, I'm just worried for the people who are out there, especially all our, uh, you know, so I've got several mates on aircraft carrier. Guy I know, really close friend back home, he's on an aircraft carrier. And uh, it's majorly worrying for them. The fact that Britain is playing such an important part in the war poses great problems for us, people who live in London, after the war is finished, because I think this city will become a target for terrorism for, for years to come. Not far away in Whitehall, government offices had extra security. There you find offices for the Ministry of Defense, the Foreign Office, offices where all coordination for emergency medical services for injured troops take place, and of course, number 10 Downing Street, the Prime Minister's residence. John Major spoke with President Bush before the attack, and just after, protesters in front of Downing Street were against American and British forces in the Gulf. This is the seat of the, the Tory government. This is where the people who made the decision to massacre innocent uh, Iraqis uh, are actually to be found. And therefore, this is where we, where, where we find our enemy and we'll come and demonstrate against them. As has often been the case, CNN's worldwide reach showed President Bush addressing Americans. Only this time, his audience included night owls at an all-night coffee shop in London's West End. While the world waited, while the world talked peace and withdrawal, Saddam Hussein dug in and moved massive forces into Kuwait. It is now 5.42 in the morning London time. Prime Minister Major will have comments for the United Kingdom and the news media in about uh, two hours. He is expected to outline Britain, Britain's strategic involvement in Operation Desert Storm. Do you want me to ask him? CNN yeah. reporting live in London. Mitch, we are going to hear from uh, the Prime Minister here in the next hour or so, as you just said. Uh, what else can we expect to hear from other European community members, and particularly France, that uh, obviously... Uh, uh, ...once the casualties begin to occur and some of the, the wounded and even the dead begin to come back home again. But for the moment, uh, in the early hours of this war, the president has what he needs at this time, and that is strong domestic support. We'd like now to give you some of the quick reaction that came also from Capitol Hill this evening, some of the voices from the House and Senate. I think all of us uh, are uh, deeply concerned that this war now be as short as possible, that, as the president indicated, it be with the minimum loss of life and is uh, decisive in its result. Now it's time to get behind our president and to support uh, the young men and women who are there. We, we had the proper debate, we had the vote. Uh, as divisive as that may have been, I would uh, believe that Americans now come shoulder to shoulder in support of the president. There comes a time when I think you must proceed and apparently... Uh, 
we found uh, people going home from uh, evening plays in downtown London's West End. Uh, and uh, we have been getting some, even though it was late and many people uh, were already in bed. They will soon find out, probably in the next hour or two. But we have some, some political reaction. Uh, Chancellor Cole. Uh, Mitch Leppard, we, need to, we have some more pool casualties. tape here. Mitch Leppard, excuse me for interrupting. But again, yeah, we have some uh, U.S. pool. This is shot by the media. This is pool video that was shot uh, presumably in Saudi Arabia. This uh, can't obviously tell what kind of an attack plane or uh, bomber that was. But we're going to bring in Wolf Blitzer, who's at the Pentagon right now, has been uh, throughout the evening and the early morning. Wolf Blitzer, can you uh, fill us in on what we're seeing here? This looks like some of the first uh, U.S. fighter aircraft okay. uh, returning to the uh, U.S. air bases in Saudi Arabia. This looks like an F-15. That um, we tried. To clearly, the uh, U.S. Air Force and the Navy wanted to undertake all of these airstrikes at night. We're told that F-117A stealth fighters, the radar evading uh, fighters, were very much involved in knocking out some of the major Iraqi uh, strategic sites, the uh, chemical weapons facilities, the Scud ballistic bases. We're told that uh, most of the Iraqi Air Force, all of the uh, major air bases, appear to have been destroyed. Pentagon officials are obviously very pleased by the work by these uh, fighter aircraft. Here is an F-15 uh, returning to an air base in Saudi Arabia. Technically, these are Saudi air bases. This was a joint operation between the United States, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and Great Britain, the four countries that participated in so far what is still an air war. Here are some of the uh, ground crew awaiting the return of the first U.S. fighter aircraft sent into Iraq and occupied Kuwait to go after several uh, of the most important Iraqi strategic targets. Clearly these guys are pleased. Even as we speak right now, the Pentagon has received no indication that any of the um, hundreds of U.S and Allied fighter aircraft involved in the strike, that any of them uh, were damaged or destroyed. Uh, we're told, at least uh, as of now, and these are initial reports, that uh, they appear to have returned safely to their bases in Saudi Arabia. Here are some more planes returning from the first wave of U.S. Uh, airstrikes at Saudi Arabia. It's still dark in Saudi Arabia. This is the first videotape that the Pentagon pool has released to the uh, American news media. Clearly there is a great uh, sense of relief, at least uh, based on these initial reports. And uh, we're gonna get more information, of course, uh, uh, during the uh, daylight hours as the uh, intelligence and satellite reconnaissance photography goes over and assesses all of the damage from these uh, massive bombing runs. Here comes another uh, US fighter aircraft returning to a base in Saudi Arabia from its mission in, uh, in Iraq seems to be taking you know is it is it landing that no, seems seems to be taking off and going this this videotape obviously uh was taken uh, earlier this evening as the united states undertook this massive operation uh, code named uh, desert storm interestingly enough storm uh, probably came from uh, storm and norman uh, general norman schwarzkopf the commander of operation Desert Shield. Here's a looks like a ground crew uh, person, uh, but uh, we can't hear exactly what he's saying. That's uh, this is Wolf Blitzer reporting live from the Pentagon. Now back to you, Patrick, in Atlanta. Again, what we're watching here is U.S. pool tape, and there is an interview, as you can see, but the audio we don't have any control of over that. That has been fed in. Uh, we do not hear what the. Uh, what exactly he was saying, but again, that was U.S. pool video, presumably of the fighters returning from their mission into uh, Iraq and into Kuwait. Susan? Again, we also need to point out that we expect to hear an address from Saddam Hussein on Iraqi television. We don't know when this will be, but CNN's crews in Baghdad have been told to expect an address from Saddam Hussein to the Iraqi people on television, quote, momentarily. Now, we should point out that we don't know when that address was taped. We will, of course, attempt to bring it to you live or as soon as possible. We also plan to broadcast our own video shot by CNN crews that 
that weathered the artillery, the storm last night in Baghdad. We will bring that to you live unedited as soon as it is fed into uh, CNN's headquarters here in Atlanta. Meantime, in the United States, members of Congress were quick to react to the beginning of war against Iraq. Most expressed hope that the conflict ends quickly with a minimum number of casualties. Some lawmakers also praise what they consider the apparent U.S. upper hand in the assault. The difference between the, or it was another gentleman, the difference between the U.N. and allied forces is, and, and the Iraqi is that the field commanders have appropriate ability to give appropriate orders in our particular procedures and the Iraqis take their order from a single point and they apparently blew out the command and control centers uh, at each location. That I would think is what must have occurred because they did not seem to respond, at least the Iraqi air uh, arm did not seem to respond, which I would think uh, would possibly mean that many of them were taken out on the ground. Even if the air forces don't do it entirely themselves, they may do 90% of it or 80% of it, in which case the, then the ground force operation it would be fairly simple. But I would be very surprised. I'm still skeptical. I mean, put me down as skeptical. I think that you're going to need a ground attack, that this thing is going to be weeks, not days, that uh, we're still going to need, uh, we're going to have some casualties here. Um, in other words, don't let this optimism here Get, don't let it get, don't carry your way. One California congressman was outraged by the war effort, but most were supportive. By the end of the week, Congress is expected to have a resolution supporting the president's action. Cuban President Fidel Castro says the attack on Iraq could have been avoided. Mr. Castro was giving a news conference when he found out that the multinational force had attacked Iraq. He says, quote, it's an unnecessary war. Anything can happen there, even an ecological catastrophe. Castro says the U.S., quote, was bent on war when a peaceful solution could have been found, unquote. My feelings of that of shock and horror that is felt by all, and which the entire world must be feeling. Feelings of a great sorrow, a great awareness of what war is and can mean, the loss of human life, and the great material destruction. I think also of the terrible consequences that it will have on the world economy, especially for the countries of the third world, and of the potential dangers that exist within that war that should never have been unleashed, and which, as I said before, was unnecessary for obtaining the objectives that they wanted in the UN. And the Cuban leader went on to say that he has a feeling of pain, of very deep bitterness. He says the mentality of the Arab countries was...